Hey everyone, my name is Bottle Top Hornet, and in this video, I'm going to go over some tips that I have for learning how to make more interesting looking builds. I've come up with five steps. One, diversify the shapes of your building. Two, experiment with different heights and multiple floors. Three, add details like balconies, loft windows, plant boxes, etc. Four, use the terrain. Let it influence the shape of your build. And five, make that terrain work for you. I'll give you an introduction to terraforming. These are just five ways that I've personally improved my building and hopefully me laying out these processes will help some of you guys as well. So let's get started. So let's start off with step one, diversifying the shapes of your building. Most people will remember or are currently in the stage where they get some oak logs, they turn them into oak planks and they start building a house. And for most people, that involves something like this. A very simple square or rectangular shape. Now, there's nothing wrong with this. This is perfectly fine and you can make a base this shape no problem, or even buildings this shape. What I want to do with this video is help some people get some ideas to start making their builds look a little bit more creative. Now, to start off with, the easiest way to do that is to just change up the shapes that you use. So, for example, Adding a little bit of an angle, changing up the way that you might make your roof space will change the overall look quite significantly. Now, this isn't the only shape that you can use. One of the biggest things that'll make your builds look slightly different or help you, pardon the pun, but think outside the box is to try out some unusual shapes. So I'll make up a few and we'll have a look at them. As you play more and start to come up with different ideas, using new shapes will help you change up the looks of your base. So as you can see, just using basic shapes and changing it up slightly will give you a very different looking platform. Now, obviously these just sitting there as flat platforms don't look like much, but you can imagine just raising some walls, putting on a simple roof, you can have a fairly simple base looking like this. So I'll use this shape here as an example. I'll add some walls and a roof to it and I'll show you what I mean. And just like that, with a little bit of work and using only materials that you would be able to gather very, very quickly. so some cobblestone, and just some oak using only oak, much like you would when you first start off a world. Hmm, not really sure if I'm a fan of how the uh, window is not perfectly center. But the easiest thing you could do to fix up something like that is to grab some shears, which take two pieces of iron, get some oak leaves off the trees that you've chopped down, and just add a little bit of greenery to your builds. And now we have a fairly decent sized starter house. There's room in here for storage, beds, and everything in between. I might just quickly actually make that up. And now if we come in, we have a little crafting area with some storage on the sides, a seating area and a bedroom with extra storage. And then we have our main bulk storage over here. So perfectly set up for very simple starter house. And this is sort of what you should be aiming for to begin with, this is simple using basic materials, but you can make something that looks pretty nice. Adding a little bit more greenery around the side, perhaps you get a shovel and make some paths out like so, and then even grabbing some, some leaves and making some hedges on the side. And with a little bit of work, you have yourself a nice looking house. So you can do the same sort of thing with many of these different shapes. You can add different shapes and come up with a very similar design, just a simple roof on top, and building out a little bit of detail using just some oak and some cobblestone. But what I want to move on to next is my step two, working with different heights or different floors. So think two-story buildings or staggered level buildings. And so to do that, I think I'm going to need to get rid of some of these to make some space. And I might do something with this one. Now you probably understand what I mean when I say adding an extra story. Making a two-story building is fairly straightforward. The thing that I want to focus on is adding staggered layers. Doing this, for me at least, makes buildings look a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more interesting. And as we'll get to in the later steps, it means that it can adapt to the shape of your landscape, 
Right now we're on a super flat world, so that obviously isn't important. But once we move on to the next steps, you'll be able to see a version of this that I will do that actually follows the landscape itself. So for this one, I'm gonna use a very similar build palette to that. Just basic materials that you can get very early in the game with a few trees and digging a decent sized hole in the ground as you're mining, you'll gather a bunch of materials like the cobblestone. And using the borders of cobblestone, I'll show you what I mean. So for example, this might be your entrance to a crafting area at the base of your house. Now you might use up this area fairly quickly and as you progress further in the game, you're going to probably require more space than your starting house. So as you begin to expand, adding the different layers, but also separating them will help you define different areas of your base a lot easier. So let me add on a piece to this one and we'll start to see what I'm talking about. Now, for example, this area could be used as a bulk storage and maybe tucked into the corner you could have something like a enchanting table. Freeing up this walkway across here, giving you a little bit of extra space, but at the same time, this change in level provides a little bit more of a dynamic feeling to the building and you'll have different heights in your roof lines. So from a distance, where this looks still rather blocky and fairly rectangular in shape overall, once we build this up, it's going to grow into a far more interesting shape than that house over there is. Now the last thing that I want to do is maybe add a third level. So say this area here is our crafting area where you'll come in and offload a bit of your stuff into some furnaces, craft up some things, and then move on up to your storage room. But we need a bedroom. So I'll add on another section at a different level again that can house our beds and a few decorations, and then we'll come back and we'll turn it into a proper base, much like we did with this one. So now we have a third elevation, breaking it up, raising it off the ground, already creating a bit of a different look to what we have here, because this is already almost the same height as that build. But we have this changing feeling where everything was in the one room over there and it all felt connected. Here we have the potential for a crafting room, coming upstairs, a wall of chests and stuff to store our goods, perhaps, like I said, a little enchanting area, and then finally come up top to have a couple of beds here and maybe a bit of a view out over the, the greater area, because obviously, you will have a more interesting landscape than this flat world. So what I'm going to do is, as these become a little bit more complicated than that one, I'm going to do them in time lapses so you can see how I build up from this into a fully fledged building. Now I might add a little bit more detail and maybe by the time you're up to this stage, you'll have a few more different wood types and a few more different blocks to create a slightly more aesthetically pleasing roof line than this. So I'm going to build this up, turn it into a base, and you'll get to see what I mean about these staggering roof lines and staggering sizes and heights of these platforms. And now, with the two next to each other, you can see what I mean about the varying heights of the roof. It makes it look a little bit more impressive, given part of that is because it is bigger. Obviously, you're going to have a lot more uh, visual emphasis when it's, it's a bigger build than the smaller one. But starting to add the different colors, the different materials, and growing in your build palette is gonna make a huge improvement. So if we come up here, I haven't put any doors yet, but you can see what I mean about having the potential for a crafting area. Maybe you put down a brewing stand or something just here and then moving up into the middle, we have the potential for some storage. And like I said, an enchanting area. Now, 
I have done the bare minimum as far as decorating this area goes because I was trying to just get the point across of these different layers breaking up your building a little bit. But you can absolutely do a better job of <laughs> having this uh, storage area looking a little bit nicer and decorate these rooms any way you wish. There, <laughs> there is no set way that you have to do it. You can follow and, and do simple stuff like this with just oak, but you could do a full stone floor in here if you wanted to or anything in between. And now if we just move up to the top, we have a very simple bedroom and a fireplace. A little bit of artwork, but you know, like I said, I just threw it all together. It's not necessarily how my final decoration would go. But this fireplace actually leads me into my next section. Section three, where we want to add details like balconies, different windows, planter boxes, and all the things in between. So I'm going to add some lean-tos on the side of this building because since we have a flat world here, this would usually perhaps be up on a hill. But it looks fairly tall and a little bit weird sticking out of the ground like this. This was meant to represent the way you would build on different levels, which we'll move on to in step number four. But for step number three, I'm going to add maybe some balconies, some lean-tos, and try to turn this from a very basic looking building, which has very flat walls and not too much going for it on the outside other than its own block palette. And I'm going to add some stuff to make it look a little bit more impressive be it some more leaves, a little bit of decoration around pathways leading up to it and all of that. So give me a second, we'll pop back in and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And so with a little bit of effort, we come up with something like this, a far more complete looking build with a little bit more of what you would actually end up getting in your playthrough. Now, <laughs> over here, what you would possibly do is use this area for say a, a small crop farm, hiding the water underneath some of these leaves over here and you could plant anything that you desire, be it carrots, potatoes, wheat and whatnot. We have some horse stables on the side, a little place to keep some of your friends. I ended up putting a fence around this whole thing because if this was a survival world, you might want to be able to run in through and filter some of the mobs, stop them from coming across. We've got a little spot here for doing some blacksmithing, changing some names, combining some materials and stuff smelting up some iron, things like that, and some storage for that. We have our front door here, a little bit of shelter for our friend, a dog that we can have a little water bowl next to. Since this is half slabs, putting a cauldron in here brings it up to a nice height where a dog could drink from. A little water feature, and much the same of everything inside of here. So as you can see, just adding a little bit of greenery, creating some little gardens and whatnot for bees, adding a few bits and pieces around the sides to give it a little bit more character, you can change a build and make it look pretty impressive. I ended up punching a hole through the top of here where that fireplace was. So we have a little bit of smoke coming out of a chimney. If you wanted that to go higher, you could always chuck a few hay bales underneath the campfires and that extends the, the smoke a little bit more. I created a little balcony out here with a seat looking out to our pretend landscape that we don't have in this flat world. Open into our bedroom like so. And of course, just a pathway coming out to whatever is on the outside of your base. So as you can see, adding some details, adding some little planter boxes, some different areas to spice up the outside of your build will do wonders as to making it look far more complete and far more interesting. But I think with that, it's time for us to go on to step four, using the landscape to influence the way that you build. Because with this, as you can see, I have created my own heights, my own layers, but you might find an area that looks interesting and it gives you a chance to tailor your build to the landscape and come up with something a little bit different. Now, in this one, I used different shapes, tried to vary up the shapes that I used, like we had in example one, where trying some different things, adding some different shapes will give a lot more variety to your buildings. So this building here has the corners cut off, but it's almost a rectangle. This is the same, it was a big square with two diagonal corners and then the one corner here. So you can almost imagine that each room had slightly more corners cut off than the next. One, two, and then four for the last one. But you could say three since this joins the two. So for stage four, I think I'm gonna to have to pop into a real world, <laughs> a proper landscape, and uh, I'll stay in creative and see what we can build up in there. So let's do that. Okay. Ooh, yeah. I can work with this. This is actually pretty good. Let's have a look, see. We've got a dark forest. 
some interesting mountains nearby, nice open areas, and a few hills, which is interesting. That's good. That means that we can maybe use some of this to uh, influence our build. So much like with step three, I'm going to go in and I'm going to time lapse this next build as well, because it's going to take me probably a lot longer than that last one. I'm going to try and do my best version of a fully completed base. Something that I would have after getting everything set up, maybe to the point where I'm fighting the Ender Dragon, or maybe even after when I've really started to get into building a significant setup of sorts. So let's pop back into another time lapse. I'll see what I can come up with that uses this landscape a little bit more interesting. And keep in mind, each one of these stages has definitely been growing the size of the base, thinking about bigger and better things, and really coming up with some very impressive builds that you guys will be able to show off to your friends or even just be proud of for yourself. So let's jump into this time lapse and see what I can do. I'm just popping back in again for a second because as I'm starting to get the main shapes of the building or the entire base set out, I'm starting to really run into the limitation of the landscape that I have. This generation that has happened here with very, very flat edges and some of the things that I would like to do require a little bit more land around. So I've just popped out of that time lapse to talk to you about how using terraforming, changing the landscape to match what you want to build rather than fully relying on the shapes and whatnot of the landscape to influence. As you can see, I have used the steps of the, the hill to slowly increase the height of this base, give it different areas. Maybe you'd have a mine or something put down through the center there and starting to get around and add more details into the surrounding landscape. But terraforming some of this land and changing it so that it matches the vision that I have and the things that I want to add is really where you start to bring your building to the next level. Now, I haven't obviously added a lot of details to this like I did as far as awnings and stuff because I wanted to get the, the main shape sorted first. But as I terraform, I'm going to get through, add maybe a bridge across here, some extra layers, some farms and whatnot, and bring this space to life. And then we'll pop in at the end, we'll have a chat about it all, go over a couple of the last few things that I want to talk about, and then that'll be it. Hopefully you guys will be able to use some of these tips to your advantage. So let's pop back into that time lapse, keep going, try and bring this up to the next level, and I'll be back in a second.
And I think I'm going to call it there. This is one of those things that I could continue to work on for many, many more hours, adding lots and lots of little details, which is something that you would do if this was your survival world. Obviously, me coming in and trying to do all this in a big burst is a lot different to you discovering what you need and what you want as you play through your game or your playthrough of Minecraft. But as you can see, I've done my best to sort of mold it back into the uh, the landscape a little bit. I used the landscape to shape what I placed in the build, but at the same time, it was almost a give and take in both directions. I used it to influence the levels that I have. <laughs> there are some unfinished areas because, like I said, I could work on this for hours and hours and hours, do lots and lots of different bits and pieces and add cool little areas throughout the entire build. But for now, <laughs> It sort of it was more just to get the point across that you use these shapes, you use these different areas and whatnot, and also use the shape of the landscape to influence what you make. And you come up with an idea. You do what you can, and this was just sort of completely improvised. I didn't really have a plan going into it of what it was going to be because I hadn't seen the world yet. So I spawned in and started building essentially straight away. It's one of those things where if you have a lot more time in the world and you discover a place that really suits your needs, you could build something probably far nicer than this and far more impressive, especially as your skills start to grow. But I kind of like the vision, the look from down here. I, I think it looks pretty cool. Just some very minor terraforming, adding a few little shelves of uh, off the edge of this mountain and a little bit of work around the sides is all that was needed. I didn't have to change the landscape that much. It was just a little bit to make it suit my needs a little bit more. And I think this whole area looks pretty cool. I could spend another 10 hours working on this and building up this whole area, but for the purposes of this video, I don't think I need to do that. I think I've got my point across that you can really blend a build in with the landscape and make it look fairly impressive, but the process that you use to get there is rather simple. It's really just like we had in step one and two, it's using shapes, changing up the shapes that you're using, circles, rectangles, sweeping around, more circles, and everything in between, trying to just come up with something that's a little bit more than a rectangular box. I envisioned this as almost a retaining wall, holding back this little bit of land <laughs> that was starting to come into this area, and eventually you would potentially build up some stables or something over here for your animals. And there's so many different things that you could do, especially once you start adding things like automatic farms and actually turning this into a functional survival world. But this is where I think we're gonna wrap up this video. Hopefully you guys understand the reasoning behind my five processes. It's not that they're all separate, it's that they encompass one another. It's small stepping stones to building up to something of this scale or larger. It's not going above and beyond your own capabilities. Practice the small stuff, make little builds, learn what kind of blocks you like to use, and then start to experiment. And over time, you'll get to the point where you're comfortable building bigger things like this and using different tips and tricks that you've picked up over your time playing and watching other people on YouTube and things like that, all leading to that confidence. So to summarize what I've gone through in this video, try using some different shapes, adding some different layers to those shapes and staggering your builds to create some depth, don't forget to add details and little interesting facets to your builds that will make them look a little bit different to just some flat walls. Use the environment to your advantage. Let it influence the builds that you make and it'll give you something that looks far more organic and looks like it actually fits in with the world. This <laughs> looks like it belongs there, in my opinion anyway. It looks like it was built purposefully to use this landscape. And then of course, number five, when you start getting comfortable with your builds, you can manipulate the land by terraforming and make it look like how you want, just so that you can make the landscape work for you, because they, it doesn't always work how you want to, so changing it up is great. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this tips and tricks video. I'm honestly not quite sure whether it's going to be a help to many people, but at the very least, if you find something that you enjoy the look of, it might give you some inspiration, and that's all I could hope for. So if you did enjoy this video, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like and leave some constructive criticism in the comments. <laughs> I might do some more of these in the future as I begin to expand my building skills as well. So if I did do that, I'd like to know what you guys want to look for and, and what kind of information you're after. But until next time, and if you're following along with the Let's Play, I hope you're taking care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.
Bye-bye. <laughs>